In the next two lessons, we're going to be focusing in on Jesus. In a particular way, we're going to be looking at Jesus as Lord and as Savior. When we talk about Lord, we're talking about his identity, who he is. When we're talking about Savior, we're talking about what he's done. So today, we're going to be talking about Jesus as Lord, his identity. Now, something we know about Jesus as we read the scriptures, is that he gathered crowds. Many people were captured by him and, and heard about him, and some were scandalized by what he was doing and saying. Others were attracted and amazed by what he was saying. Think about it for a moment. This man went around and showed great signs and wonders, great power. I mean, they were hearing that the lame were walking, that the blind were seeing again. That he was multiplying bread and fish. And even the dead were rising. You could see how Jesus would have caught the attention of the people. But not only was he showing signs and wonders, but it was what he was saying that was also capturing people's hearts and they're asking the question who is this man and jesus aware that people were asking this question people out there were saying who is jesus he decided to ask his disciples in matthew 16 he says who do they say i am now he asked that question because he knew that his identity was central, critical to his mission. If we were to understand why Jesus and what he was doing and how we can be affected by him even today, he knew that his identity, who he was, was essential. We had to understand there couldn't be confusion. And so he asked the question, who are they saying I am? And we discover in Matthew 16 that people thought there was confusion. People thought he was a prophet or he was John the Baptist coming back from the dead. And over the last 2,000 years, there's continued questions about people are asking, who is he? But overall, there has always been throughout history a sense or an awareness that Jesus was a good person, that he was a central figure in history. Gandhi recognized Jesus as the greatest man to ever live. Islam, one of the great religions, recognizes Jesus as a messenger. In the Quran, they constantly refer to him as a great prophet. And they see Jesus as a savior that will come back someday. The Mormons and Jehovah Witnesses all see Jesus as a central figure in their religion. We Catholics, Christians, make a unique and an extraordinary claim. We see Jesus not just as a moral teacher, a prophet, or a messenger of God, but we make the claim that he is Emmanuel, God with us. We believe that Jesus is God, the second person of the Holy Trinity. The incarnation, meaning we believe that God became one of us. God became man. Jesus was both man and God. A great mystery. That he walked, God walked amongst us. He ate with us, he talked with us, he cried and laughed with us, and he continues to be close and intimate with us. An extraordinary claim. If this is true, that God became one of us, it would seem right that 
those that know that to be true, that they would make sure that everyone knows that God, the creator of heaven and earth, has come to us. But for us, as humans on this planet, it would be the right response to be a little bit curious and asking the question, why did God, the creator of heaven and earth, come? Why was he here for a certain amount of time? And how does it affect us today? Unfortunately, this confusion or this lack of curiosity has a great impact on how we commune or relate or uh, experience God in our lives. This confusion impacts our ability to relate to God. For us to be able to understand God's love and experience the intimacy of God as individuals, not just, you know, uh, the, the human race, but you and I, the only way we can understand and experience God's love in our lives is to understand Jesus' divinity. And he was aware of that. Jesus was aware of that, that it, it, the clarity was essential for you and I as individuals. And so he went uh, to Peter and said, who do they? And he boiled it down to, who do you think I am? Who do you think I am? And he asks the same question to you and I. The most important question. Who do you say Jesus is? Our answer to that. Our response to that question. Changes everything. How we experience the church. How we experience God how we understand the sacraments, how we're able to relate to each other, our awareness of eternity, our understanding of the divinity of Christ is what draws us in. We learn that from the scriptures. Thomas had great respect for Jesus, St. Thomas. But it was only when he stuck his fingers in the palm of his hand that he realized that Jesus was God, my Lord and my God. St. Paul, when he discovered, when he encountered Jesus on the way to Damascus, it changed his life, the direction of his life, his relationship with God. It was essential. The woman at the well... When she saw that he was Emmanuel, the promised Savior to come, it changed the direction in her life. For me personally, it was the divinity of Christ that pulled me closer, enabled me to understand the significance of Jesus in my life. Understanding Jesus' divinity, his identity, is a hinge that opens the door to all the great mysteries and the intimacy and the relationship that God has to offer. Recognizing how important the understanding of Jesus' true identity, over the years, we've asked thousands of people a similar question that Jesus asked Peter. Who do you say that I am? We've asked the question, do you believe that Jesus is God? And the response of Catholics practicing and non-practicing, the response is shocking. That close to 90% of those people that we asked the question to, their response was confusion and a lack of clarity of what we were asking Many just outright said, no, I, I do not believe 
that Jesus is God. Others said, well, he's a God, he's kind of like God, he's, he's close to God, but I, 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 I don't understand, or I've never seen him as God. Others say, well, I, I guess if you think about it, yeah, I, I, I do believe that he's God, but I mean, he's God for me, but he's not necessarily God for everyone. Well, it's very difficult for Jesus to be God just for a few people. If he's God, he needs to be God for everyone. This confusion about Jesus has a dramatic impact on our experience of him. You could see why people are able to walk away from the church so easily. And those who are far away, that they have no real interest in coming back. Because their perception of the church is that its origin is human. Like, Jesus isn't God, so the founder and his disciples are just human like you and I. They don't perceive the church as an encounter with the living God, but they see it as doctrine and devotion. It's things we need to do. And so they're not captured by it. It's, it's not an encounter. If we want to understand and relate to God in the way we've been talking over the last few sessions, or if we want to see our children, our neighbors, our loved ones to come back, we need to make sure that there is clarity about Jesus and who he is. Now, some of you out there, you might be the ones that are confused and, and not clear on who Jesus is. And I want you to receive what I'm saying, not as judgment or, or criticism. You believe what you believe. But in this session, I want to make a case for Jesus as divine. I want to help you understand what the church really teaches, what Jesus says about himself. So I would like to look at what the church actually says. What the church believes to be true about Jesus. And then I would like to look at the scriptures and what Jesus says about himself. So what I'd like to do right now is to read over the creed that we recite every Sunday. And we'll see there what the church says and what the church believes. To understand the creed, the, the statement that we're making, the, the profession that Jesus is God, and to understand that in our hearts, not just in our minds, is revelation, meaning God has to reveal it to us. It's just not information, it's revelation. Because once Jesus asked Peter, who do you say that I am? Peter responded, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus looked at him as he looks at you and I, and he says, Flesh and blood did not tell you that. You didn't come to, to understand this, but it was revealed to you by the Father. Meaning the creed to understand the divinity of Christ is revelation, meaning God has to give us the grace, the supernatural grace to actually see, to understand. And so I invite you, whenever you recite the creed at Mass, Pray and ask the Lord to reveal it to you, the truth that Jesus is God. 